Now it's finally time to implement our algorithm for checking collisions. So um, let's go into our player class uh, header file. And before we get started, I'm going to break out our update method into a couple of helper methods. So update x and update y. Um, and these are just to kind of keep our update method clean and not have so much information in it. So these will just be simply update x and update y. And we'll need to go into our player CC file and we'll do Unix style. Things, whatever that was. Okay. Um, we'll go to our player update method and <clears throat> we'll take out this x update stuff and move it into our update x method, which we're about to create. So I'll paste it there and grab. Shoot. Yeah. And do the same thing for y. And of course, I need to remember to call them, so I'll go back up and do that in a second. All right, we have our helper methods to make things cleaner. So we'll call this update x passing the elapsed time in milliseconds. And we have to create a map, but or name our map up here. And we can do the same thing for update y. And again, OK, the time has come we get to get rid of this to do because we're actually going to implement collision. Boom, done. Okay, now we're going to, I think we're gonna start with the update in the y direction just so that we can get some ground collisions in. So I'm gonna start with the normal case, the first case, but I'll refer back to our collision uh, our notes. So for each axis, we'll start by updating the velocity. So let's move this here and I'll label this as update velocity. Then we, what do we do? We calculate our delta. So calculate delta. And this is just going to be a constant delta equals, and it's going to be this casted to an end. I wonder what happened there. Okay. So now we have our delta. What's next? Check collision in direction of delta. So we got to, this means we're going to have an if statement and it's going to branch off into two directions. So we're really going to have four collision checks for here, so you'll see what I mean in a second. So the first collision check is in the direction of delta. So let's assume that delta is greater than zero. So we're going down. Delta is greater than zero, then we need to do our collision check. So check collision in the, in the direction of delta. So what's this going to be? This is going to be down, so we need to check collisions in the bottom direction for, with our bottom rectangles. So we'll um, get all the tiles that we're colliding that our bottom rectangle is colliding with, and in order to do that, we'll do map dot get colliding tiles, passing it in bottom collision rectangle, and passing bottom collision rectangle our delta. 
So this will return a vector of collision tiles, so map collision tiles. And we'll just call this tiles and initialize it with this return value. All right, so now we have our tiles. So what are we going to do with our tiles? Well, we need to loop through all the tiles and see if any of the tiles that are colliding are wall tiles. And if they are wall tiles, then we need to react accordingly. And if they aren't, then we don't do anything. Um, well, actually, we do something, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But I'm trying not to throw too much information at you at once because this is a lot of information. So let's iterate over all of our tiles to see if we if any of them are um, wall tiles. So for size t, i equals 0, i is less than tiles dot size plus plus i. OK, now, um, if tile sub i dot tile type equals map wall tile, because that's what we're looking for, then we don't really need to check any more tiles so we can break out of our loop. But before we break out of our loop, let's record that we have collided. So I'll make a bool collided, and I'm going to clean this up in a little bit. You'll see how, and it'll be really cool. I'm going to say that we have collided. And I also want to record which row and call that we've collided with. So row equals zero, call equals zero. So our row will be row equals tile sub i dot row and call equals tile sub i dot call. So now we've checked the collision in the direction of delta. Um, we can react to our collision. Now it's time to react. So we'll close player H and look at player CC. OK, so now if collided, we'll react to collision. That's this part of it. And this is just so you know which part of the algorithm we're working on. So if we've collided, what do we need to do? Well, <clears throat> first of all, we set um, the the bottom of our tile and align it with the top of the colliding tile. So how do we get the top of the colliding tile? So the top of the colliding tile is going to be our row or its row times game k tile size. And what's our bottom? Our bottom is the uh, it's not going to be bottom rect, but our relative bottom is going to be um, k x rect, no, y rect, because we're doing right. So k collision y dot bottom. And this is going to be 32. So if that helps you think about it, this, this is going to be row times 32 minus 32. So we're going up a whole tile. But I'm doing it this way because this will be consistent with how we handle x collisions. So this is where we need to set our y. Um, what's the other thing we need to do? Well, we need to set velocity y to be 0, because we are no longer going down. And a third thing we need to do, and we were doing this before in our hacky collision solution, was to set on ground to be false. True. Just kidding. True. Because we are just hit with the bottom. Otherwise, we haven't collided, so we can just move by delta, and that's all. And also, we'll set on ground to be false. And we could set on ground to be equal to collided, but this is just, uh, I think, easier for me to explain to you guys, I guess. It looks easier to understand, but that would be a nice uh, way of reducing lines of code, I guess, if you're into that. So uh, we set our y to be add, add delta to our y. OK, so now we've reacted to our collision. What's next? Now we check collision in the other direction and then update position accordingly. So um, before I do that, I'm going to clean this up. So now we have, we have these three things 
uh, bool collided, int row and or row and call, and they're all related to what we get out of our collision. So I'm going to make a small struct, and we're going to use this more later. So that's why I'm doing this now. But I'm showing you kind of building up to it. So I'm going to call it collision info, and it's going to be a bool collided, an int row and a call. So I'm going to just put all this inside of a collision info up above here. So collision info, I'll call it info equals, I'll just default it to some, uh, it's going to be set, but default it to false, that's the important part. The zero zero don't really matter because they're going to get set if collision is true and if collided is true and not used if collided is false. So instead of having a bool collided, this is to collect information together, like information gets collected together. And I don't need to do this anymore because I'm setting it up here. But I do need to do it. I do need to set it in here. So we'll say info equals true row call. Nope, tile sub i dot row, tile sub i dot call. Now, again, we need to continue to use our info, dot collided, info dot row. Okay, we're all good. So now I'm gonna move on to the next part and just use our info again. So what's the next part again? Check collision in other direction. So we'll set and we'll reset info to be equal to false zero zero. And I could make a new variable for this, but you'll see that it doesn't really matter. So now I'm gonna do our tiles again. So I'll copy and paste this and change all the relevant information. So instead of constructing tiles, we'll set it equal to something. Um, <clears throat> So instead of the bottom collision with delta, we're going to do something different. We're going to do the top collision with zero because we don't want to include delta in our top collision. And if you watch episode 12, you'll see that I don't do any delta for the other direction collisions. Just check it after it's been moved. So now that we're doing that, we can see if any of the tiles have a collision. And if they do, just break out of it. Now we can update the position accordingly. So if info.collided, we can um, set our y to a new position. And it's going to be, where is it going to be? It's going to be at our info.row times gain. So we'll look at the top of the tile, but we're actually going to want to look at the bottom of the tile. So we want to align the top of us with the bottom of the tile. And in order to do that, we can add our height to this. And at, by adding the height, um, it'll align us beautifully. And if you don't understand why, this might be a good thinking exercise for you. Just draw it out, see how it looks. So let's build and run. And we should get good collisions with our when we're going down. But I don't think we'll be able to jump. Actually, no, we won't be able to jump because we are only looking at the case where if delta is greater than 0. So let's look at this. Boop, boop, boop. Well, he fell pretty fast, so I didn't get to see that, but it looked like he was on the ground. There we go. I saw it that time. He was falling. And I can walk around. He, oh, look, he snaps up, which is good. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we want, him snapping up. 
Uh, of course, we'll be colliding with the X before we collide with the Y, so later he won't be snapping up, but quite so obviously, at least. So yeah, let's um, let's make it let's handle the other direction. Um, but before you do that, you might notice that I copied and pasted all this code, and I didn't change any of it. So that means, and we're going to be doing this a lot later. So this means that we don't actually need. Um, we don't need to co keep copying and pasted, pasting this. We can make a function out of it. And it's just going to be a, a function. It's going to need to know the map, the rectangle, and I guess a tile type maybe. Or we could just do one for wall collisions. So um, get wall collision info. That sounds like a good name for a function. Yeah? Yeah? Sounds good. Okay, I'm going to make a function up in our anonymous namespace for this because it doesn't really need to be a member data because it's not really using any of our member data. So um, we'll call this. I moved our collision info up with it. So I'm going to call this. Uh, it's going to return a collision info. Info. Uh, not info, get wall collision info. And it's going to take in a map, so const map map. And it's going to take in a rectangle, so const rectangle rectangle. And it's going to return this info. Let's see, so it doesn't know what bottom collision delta is, so we'll just use rectangle instead here. All right, so now we have a function that will really reduce our typing and boilerplate code. So in here, check collision of delta, so we're just gonna change all of this, collision info info equals, and we're gonna call our git, wall collision info. And it needs a map too. So map. No suitable user defined conversion from unnamed collision info to collision info exists. Oh, I need to get rid of this collision info because it's getting confused because of that. Okay, so now we've reduced our boilerplate quite a bit, I think. So now we can just set info equals um, get wall collision info. Passing it in addition to the rectangle and map. And we can get rid of these loops. All right, so now that we've cleaned that up, quite a bit, I'm going to move on to the other direction. So if we are going upwards or jumping, um, we can do pretty much the same kind of stuff, except instead of, let's, let's go through it a little bit at a time. I copied and pasted everything. So um, <clears throat> instead of a bottom collision, it's going to be a top collision, given delta still. So now we react, next we react to the collision. So if info dot collided, um, then we want to set ourselves to be at the top of the row plus our bottom. No, minus our. So we've hit the top of our head with the bottom. So it's going to be this um, y equals info dot row times game k tile size plus k collision times height. And that's because we're hit colliding with the top. And we could break these out into functions, but there's only they're only used in two places, so this is easier than breaking it out into a function, I think. Um, so I'll just copy and paste these. Again, my rule of thumb for making functions is like if you use it in more than two places, then you want to make it into a function. Otherwise, it's up to your discretion. Or my discretion. Well, it's always up to your discretion, but 
Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, so that's where we set it. Yeah, we want to set velocity of y to be equal to 0, 0.0 ash. No, we don't want it to set on ground to be true because we collided with our head. Um, and otherwise, y plus equals delta, and yeah, on ground should be false there. Um, check collision in the other direction, and instead of top collision, we want to check with the bottom collision. Same zero instead of delta there. And if we collided, then we, yeah, and I moved that over properly. So let's try this out. And he still jumps. I wonder, it looks a little bit off. It looks like he's kind of jumping a little bit. Um, hmm. And I think that's because we need to set on ground to be false inside of our, like if we collide with the bottom tile in down here, we need to set on ground to be false. On ground to be true. Ah, that's what I mean, true. So let's try that, see if he's doing jumping. Like he was just twitching on the ground and it was uh, stopping him from jumping. But yeah, that got rid of his switch. We can jump and I'm pressing multiple times. So we're not like jumping multiple times or anything crazy like that. And like he's hitting his head, and yes, beautiful. He's jumping too high because he should only be jumping three tiles. But I'm gonna fix that in the next episode because this episode is getting crazy long. Um, so let's exit out of that. Okay, now we can handle our exclusions, and we'll be done. Okay, so let's start with updating our velocity because this is the easy part. So we'll just call this update velocity. Okay, we've updated our velocity. Now we need to calculate delta x, calculate delta. So, and this is going to be constant delta equals int round. Okay, so we've done the two easy parts. So next we check collision in the direction of delta. So I'm gonna copy and paste again because it's very similar, um, but different enough that it might be annoying to make it into another function. But Again, I might make a cleanup episode soon where I do make these out into new functions. But Okay, so we have collision info, info equals, and we want to do our right side first, so right collision, because we're going, we're going to the right. Delta is greater than zero, so right collision delta. If we've collided, then we need to set our x to be something. Um, we can get rid of all of that pretty much. So x is going to be... Um, so we'll start by setting it at the left side of our collision, so info.call times game k tile size. And then we're going to subtract from that our um, right. So k collision x dot right. And we want to set our velocity to be zero because we want to pretend like these things have an effect on us. Otherwise, then it, the other otherwise is we can um, just increase by delta and get rid of this on ground stuff because we don't need it. Okay, so what about the other direction? The other direction is going to be left collision. So if we collided, then we um, don't do any of that. We do our x should be equal to, uh, we'll start at the top or the right side. So call 
times game k tile size. And this will be plus r width. And that should be info.call. What did I do? What did I push? OK. Now let's do our else case for our delta. So check in if we're going to the left or not moving. Um, then we'll do the same exact stuff, except kind of in a reverse order. So instead of the right collision, we're going to do the left collision given our delta. So for reacting, we're going to switch these x's around. Um, otherwise, yeah, we, we do want to do our velocity x to be 0 again. Otherwise, add our delta. Yeah, that looks good. Then instead of a left collision, we want to do a right collision down here. OK, if we've collided, then we set ourselves to be flush with the left side. So that all looks good. I think we're done with this super long episode. Let's see. OK, that's not quite right. What am I doing wrong? So the right side looks like it's working, but the left side isn't. And it must be because I'm using the wrong value. So it's. Uh, Actually not width, it's for our left collision. It's uh, we don't add our k collision x dot width, we add our k collision x dot right. Um, yep. So let's build it and run it and see how it looks. Oh, this is so beautiful. So now he's colliding with the left side. He's going off beautifully um, on the right side. And on the left side, he goes off beautifully. And then if I go up close to the tile and then kind of hit my head, but go a little bit further away, hopefully you can see that he'll, he'll get pushed back. So he got pushed back, which is exactly what we want. And then, so this is where the forgiveness comes into play. Like if he were a full 32 by 32 tile, this would never happen. But if he were, even if he were one rectangle, like this would be very hard to get right. So just going into this little hovel. Okay, so thus concludes collision detection. And if there's any part that doesn't make sense, like I would really encourage you guys to draw it out First of all, kind of like I did with the slides, like how those kinds of drawings, like make those yourself, see how it looks like uh, that'll really clear things up. And it's easier like to see it in a drawing than it is to see it in words. And even just like looking at code is more complicated than looking at a picture. So I really encourage you guys just draw it out. Seriously, it helps. It helped me and it will help you. So thanks for watching these videos. I hope they're helpful. Let me know, like leave some comments, like if there's anything I can do that would be more helpful, like explain this in more detail or explain this in more detail or explain this in less detail. You talk too much, Chris, just code. I just want to watch you code. Just let me know. And I will take it with a grain of salt and probably ignore you. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, see you guys.